Hello everyone, this is Mayur Saxena from Informatica. In this video session, I'm going to tell you how to run MDM with JBoss as a Windows service on a Windows environment. So let's begin with the agenda of this video. First of all, we'll discuss the introduction of JBoss as a service. We'll tell you what is the need of JBoss as a service. We'll define some prerequisites, steps to install, and mistakes to avoid during service installation. In this slide, we'll discuss mainly about what are the common mistakes which generally users perform while installing of JBoss as a service, due to which they face error while running MDM on it. Then we'll proceed with the demo, and after that, there will be a reference slide. Okay, so the introduction for the JBoss as a service is that there are different ways to run JBoss on, on your MDM server. This video explains one of the ways to run Windows service. The configuration is same for JBoss EAP versions 6.4, 7.1, 7.2 and 7.3 version. Also we already have a lot of documents which share information regarding JBoss as a service. But in this video, we particularly focused on running JBoss as a service especially for MDM. So what actually configurations needed to be changed for MDM. Okay, so the aim of this video is to run MDM on the JBoss server which is running as a service instead of command line. So let's focus on why we need Windows as a service, JBoss as a Windows service. Okay, so we need to start JBoss every time whenever we log in and whenever we want to run MDM. This includes the typing of complete standalone command every time whenever we want to start the JBoss or whenever JBoss restart is required. Also, whenever some apps or configuration changes required, or uh, to bring it into effect, we need to start restart JBoss, which again requires complete typing of standalone command. We also need to take care that command window do not get closed. Otherwise, we need to start it again by typing the same command. So, now we need service so that we can click once on a start button, which is provided in the service window. And we can even close the service window as well after clicking on a start. And also, this can be stopped and restart by the click only. So, let's move on to the prerequisites. It's pretty clear that JBoss must be installed and configured properly. MDM must be installed on top of it and must be in running condition. All ERs to be deployed successfully and MDM side application server should be done. So after that we need to make it run as a service which is shown in this video. Let's begin with the steps to do it. First of all we need to download the Apache Commons daemon service render which is given in the link below. And uh, after that we need to uh, unzip the file and we need to extract this particular prunsrv.exe file and we need to place it in the JBoss installation folder bin directory. In the Windows Server System environment, we need to run where we need to run JBoss as a service. We need to set no pause variable and with the value 1. After that, we need to make some configuration changes in a standalone.bat file. Below are the parameters given. After that, we need to open the command prompt from the JBoss installation bin directory. We can also uh, use the command prompt from the administration side and then we can make the uh, we can run the service.bat install to install the JBoss as a service. Now after that we can complete the configuration from the Windows service interface where we can set automatic or manual where we can select the user type for the service. And after that we need to launch the Windows for the, to run the JBoss most important slide of this video mistakes to avoid during service installation before we begin the demo few points to be taken care when we download apache commons daemon service runner we only need to copy the prun srv.exe file sometimes by mistake or due to lack of knowledge we copy prun mgr.exe file which is incorrect and which can lead to some error okay so we need to use only prun srv.exe file not prun mgr after that, sometimes we forget to comment out. As in the steps mentioned, we have uh, shown some steps where we need to make some changes in the standalone.bat file. Uh, and there we need to replace this set server ops file uh, parameter with some other parameters. But also in the meantime, we are replacing it. We need to comment this one. Okay, so sometimes we forget to comment this one and we face errors. And the most common issue here is we need to take care of the spaces while running below command. This service dot bat install. Actually, this is not complete command. We need to uh, after this after running this service dot bat install. We need to give name for the service, 
and in that name thing we just uh, we give some different uh, spaces which we forget and uh, which leads to issue okay so one or more is issue can arise here in service windows we need to test log on first with local system account to avoid any permission issues because if we select any other account for first of all after running the fresh jboss as a service uh, the permission should be sufficient for that user so it's better to first test it with the local system account in order to avoid any issue so let's begin with the demo now so here you can see that I have downloaded this commons daemon file and in this I have this PRUN SRV application file so I need to copy this application file and need to paste it in this jboss bin directory let me paste it okay okay so I've pasted this PRUN SRV file in the jboss bin directory I need to open a standalone dot bad file. Let me open it notepad plus plus. Here I can see this line set server ops. Okay. So I've changed the parameter as per the steps I've suggested in my video. I need to save it. I've saved this file. Now I need to edit the environment variables. Here I'll create new one make sure everything is in capital and the value should be 1 environment variable is set now click on ok now from the bin folder I'll open the command prompt and I'll try to type this command make sure there are no spaces in the name and uh, we can give any name it's just a sample name you can give any any name whatever you want just press enter in the line you can see service jboss service for mdm installed okay now let me open services so this is the one get installed I've just shown jboss service for mdm right click click on properties manual or automatic whatever you want to select let me keep it manual for now log on so it's local service password whatever it is so I will suggest you to go for the local system account for now just because uh, it's not like that you cannot use this account but you can use for this account as well but I'm not sure whether in this account I have complete permissions or not and if I'm sure that if it has complete permissions whatever the permissions required for the complete jboss setup then I can use this one too for now just for testing purpose click on local system service account general properties you can click whatever select whatever you want and we have recovery options whenever the first failure takes place we have restart service run a program or restart the computer second options and third options okay so these are the recovery plans whatever you want to select I'll select local system account for this logon and I'll keep it as manual after that I click on apply okay it's applied successfully now it's manual you can see now whatever I need to do is uh, just to refresh and just it's done so whenever I want to start jboss as a service I only need to click it start here and it will start it okay and we can click on restart as well we can click on stop just it's a UI thing we do not need to use the command standalone every time from the console host port you can check whether jboss is up and so our demo ends here and you can also check the host name port and slash cmx to check whether the hub console is uh, getting launched with this or not with the jboss as a windows service and you can check the deployments folder whether all the ERs are deployed or not so these are the references there is already a written KB for this purpose but I've created this video to share the demo with you and 
to help you with the mistakes you generally used to commit while installation and for more information you can just try with the link I provided in the reference slide here you can provide us your feedback related with this video we'll be happy to hear from you and thanks thanks to you